Okay. Part two of parallel versus series wiring, ohm loads, impedance, and resistance. Um, now, what people ask me is, what what is an impedance? What is an ohm load? What is resistance? You know, what what does this have to do with my tone? Um, refer back to the first video where we go over the amplifier transformers, and and that will explain that. But without resistance, um, what you have. Resistance can come from several things. This is just a ceramic resistor. If you open up a foot pedal or an amplifier, you'll see tons of these things soldered in several different places. Um, you can get resistance from your from your voice coil, like we talked about in the first video. Uh, you get resistance from resistors, uh, which come in measured. You know, this is a, this is a 200 ohm resistor. You can get 10 ohm resistors, 4 ohm resistors. Um, you know, probably anything you would need. Um, what a resistor does is it offers up exactly what it's called, resistance to electrical flow. So this is an LED light hooked up some alligator clips to a 9 volt battery and I've got a resistor just soldered in line and it will resist the electricity enough flowing to the, to the LED light that it'll still light up for us but it resists the electricity enough to the point where it does not burn the light bulb out. That's what resistance does. It, it keeps things from turning into electrical chaos, if you will, inside your speaker. If you didn't have resistance from the voice coil or the ohm load, you would have a speaker that just instantly blew or woofed out and you wouldn't have any sound coming from it. And if you did, it would just be completely out of control frequency response between it frequency latching between the voice coil and the guitar pickup so that's what resistance does for you without resistance what you get is something that you know you don't want happening and that is uh, the light bulb or your tubes or your speaker coil will actually um, you know it'll blow up and this is what happens without resistance. Watch the light bulb. It is getting burnt up because there's, and it just popped and fizzled out because there was no resistance there. All the electric, all the electricity in the battery was allowed to flow freely into the light bulb, which was too much, and burnt it up. So. That's why you have ohm loads and measurements and things like that to and resistors to keep things in check. Now, people ask me, I'm looking at this stuff to try to figure out what's going to best suit my tone and, and I'm looking at this thing online or whatever and I'm reading this feel small parameters and the resonant frequency is 97 hertz and the usable frequency range is 70 hertz to 5 kilohertz and I've got a eminent swamp thing data sheet pulled up here online and they say what is this what does this exactly mean usable frequency range 70 to 5 and and 70 to 5 is just this one particular speaker um, that will that measurement will vary from you know several guitar speakers across the board uh, what that means is this we're going to show you um, right here I've got a little speaker set up that we're going to do a woofer test on and all that frequency response range thing is it, it's just relating to um, we're going to run a sweep here and you'll hear the speaker starting to respond in the frequency range that it was manufactured to respond and work best in. Um, if you look at the graph here, you'll see it's already running tones into the speaker and in just a few minutes, or not that, not that long actually, you'll be able to hear it. You'll hear the speaker start to come in where it's reacting to the frequencies being fed to it because that's where it was manufactured to. Here it comes up right now. And here soon, we'll get up to a frequency that's so high, the speaker will drop off because it was not manufactured to produce frequencies at that high of a level. 
and that's where it gets into the kilohertz. It goes from hertz to kilohertz. Kilohertz are the higher frequencies, like higher up on your fretboard past the 12th fret, or screaming harmonics or leads. So you'll see here when this test finishes up that you get an ohm load change or impedance change from frequency change. And here the speaker is going to drop off here because it's not manufactured to go too much higher. Now if you'll show the chart, you'll see we're up to 10k, 10 kilohertz, and the speaker is going to stop because it wasn't made to go past that, even though my software here is running tones up into 15 and 20k. Now when this hits this bar right here, it's going to stop and it's going to let us see what the values were and you'll see that this is your impedance right here this is your frequency as the frequency rises your phase inverts and your impedance actually goes up from 5 to 25 ohms so as your frequency goes up your impedance goes up and that's how ohm load changes with frequency. It's really kind of simple. Um, it's not, if you kind of break it down and, and can see it in those terms, it's not that complicated. So on to, and in the same relation of frequency and things like that, we're going to talk about cables and speaker cables real quick. Um, if you have your speaker cable and you have it so you have a longer cable than you actually should, you can actually increase your own load a little bit or resistance because what you're doing, if you have your cable laid out straight, when we test this, you'll see that we'll get, we'll sweep this cable just the same way. Now we won't be able to hear it because there's no speaker hooked up so you can hear what it's actually feeding out. But if you look at the graph, you can see it's feeding frequency through that cable and it's testing the impedance and the resistance. And it's going to do the same test from 50 to 10 to 20k. And we can stop this and it will stop because we're not trying to get any hard data against a control piece of data or anything like that. We're just trying to give you an example. Now see how that went because I've got the cable laid out straight on the floor. Now if you have your cable coiled up, say your your amplifier's here and your cabinet's here and you have your, your cable plugged into your amp and the other end of the cable is plugged into a cab and you have it coiled up on the floor like this, what did you just create? What did I just call that? A coil. What is in the back of your speaker? A voice coil. So you have just created something that is going to introduce resistance into your tone, which you do not want. Now the shielding on the speaker cable obviously reduces the amount of, of uh, resistance that is made by the coil, but the cheaper speaker cable you got the worst coil and resistance you just made by doing this on the floor behind your cab. So we'll hook this up and run a sweep on that and you'll see we'll clear this sweep here off of this screen. That, that was the first sweep when the cable was laid out straight. We're going to clear that data and we're going to do another sweep and you'll see this is going to come out completely different see how they go in the opposite direction and come back together and then they start to head out in the opposite direction again and this as it goes through the frequency range will have phase inversion and everything like that and uh, I've only I've only got about 20 seconds before I've got to cut this video off so thank you for watching and just drop down if you have any questions please email us uh, subscribe, ask us to be friends, post a video response. Uh, we're more than happy to answer questions, try to get you better tone for free. Thanks for watching and have a great day.